everybody. Welcome to the Revealing Experience. Let's give Jim some love for the welcoming music. And Mello's with us this week to help us sing. So we're going to welcome each other. We're going to welcome those still coming in. Hey, lovely ladies. Come on in. We welcome. We welcome. We welcome you. Come on in. We welcome. We welcome. We welcome you. Let go. Be free. Come on in and take a seat. We're glad you're here. We're spreading love, joy, and cheer. So come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We welcome. see we're glad you're here we're spreading love joy and cheer so come on in come on in come on in we welcome you come on in come on in come on in we welcome you come on in come on in come on Yay, you. Yay, us. You know, Reverend Sunshine said something that was so beautiful in our, in our, in our prayer, because we pray up this space before, before y'all come in. And, um, and she said, I'm so grateful for us. And it just felt, it just hit me right in that spot that just said, yes, I am so grateful for us. So let us sing. Reveal, reveal the love inside of me. Reveal the love that I was meant to be. Every time I open up, love is what I see. Reveal the love in me. inside of me reveal the peace that I was meant to be and every time I open up peace is what I see reveal the peace in me the joy reveal reveal the joy inside of me reveal the joy that I was meant to be and every time I open up joy is what I see reveal the joy in me reveal reveal the love inside of me reveal the love that I was meant to be and every time I open Love is what I see, peace. Every time I open up, peace is what I see. And every time I open up, joy is what I see. Reveal the love, the love in me. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you, Jim. Always a thank you. Always a joy. And so taking that joy that we can already feel here, let's go in that space of love and gratitude that is the life of God, that is the life that we live, that is the life that is the only life. God's life, it's perfection. 
its opportunity for our life now in the divine joy of the divine mind. And being one with that, we settle into the space that we have welcomed this evening. This energy of togetherness, this energy of communion, this blessing that teaches and shows us that we know who we are and that God is the expression of all life and that when we're here, joy is here. When we're here, God is here. When we're here, love is here. And the peace of all that we know collects us, surrounds us, hugs us, and brings us into all that is welcoming and wonderful for this evening. And knowing that, I simply allow that. I bring that forth and allow it with love and grace and ease. And so it is. Hi. This is the revealing experience, and it's another new month. And I'm excited about this one. Reverend Sunshine has been busy. She wrote all of the guided messages for the um, Science of Mind magazine for the month of September. And so we're using that as a framework this month. And we're going to look at such things that bring the theme imagine about. And tonight's message is about imagine, acceptance, and experience. So with that in mind, I figured we might want to hear a little bit about what Ernest Holmes has to say about that from Science of Mind. So, here we go. Never limit your view of life. Never limit your view of life by any past experience. The possibility of life is inherent within the capacity to imagine what life is, backed by the power to produce this imagery or divine imagination. It's not a question of failing or succeeding. It is simply a question of sticking to an idea until it becomes a tangible reality. The illusion is in the way we look at things. We have looked at poverty, degradation, and misery until they have assumed gigantic proportions. Now we must look at harmony, happiness, plenty, prosperity, peace, and right action until they appear. The way to scientifically work out a problem daily in thought is to conceive of it as if it is already being accomplished and it's an accomplished fact in your experience. We realize the desire is already embodied in the absolute. And along with that, I found a couple quotes about imagination that I just want to share that are short and sweet. J.M. Barry, otherwise known as Peter Pan, said... The moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease forever to be able to do it. Brian Andreas said, We lay there and looked up in this night sky, and she told me about the stars called blue squares and red swirls, and I told her I'd never heard of them. Of course not, she said. The really important stuff they never tell you. You have to imagine it on your own. And Gloria Steinem, ever thoughtful, said, without leaps of imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. Christopher Moore, who wrote a book called Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal, said, children see magic because they look for it. Kurt Vonnegut said, we are what we pretend to be, so we must be careful about what we pretend to be. <laughs> and last but not least, Margaret Atwood said, they spend the first three years of school getting you to pretend stuff, and then the rest of it marking you down if you did the same thing. <laughs> so, and with that, Reverend Sunshine is going to imagine, and she's going to bring acceptance and experience and all kinds of possibilities to our time tonight. So help her, come on up. Thank you, Jen. Hi, everybody. Obviously, you are powerful because you imagined yourself being here this evening and voila, 
Either that or I'm very powerful and I imagine all of you here tonight and here you are. Gosh. Oh, what, a, what a joy it is for me to speak about this idea of imagine, imagination, acceptance, experience. And what a great joy it's been to actually be published in the Science of Mind magazine. And then to get like all these random emails from people I haven't met yet, because I guess my email's in the, in the, in the introduction, and they're just like sending me, you know, these emails, love the meditation, you know, love the guided visioning for today, love this, you know, so each and every day it's just like being bombarded with love from the universe. I love that. I love that I get to experience that because I have such great love for humanity that what I'm getting back is a taste of what I put out. And it's interesting because I have imagined and continued to imagine a world that works for everyone and continue to see a world that works for everyone. And in this world that works for everyone, we gift each other with not empty platitudes, but gifts of love, gifts to one another. What I know is that, just as Jan read from the Science of Mind book today, that what it takes in order to have a dream or something that we imagine or see with our mind's eye or see with our heart or see with some internal eyes is that we must see it as if it is happening right now, as if it is true now. We must not just see it and think about it and have thoughts about it, but have it be so real that it feels tangible now in order for it to be made manifest. We have to accept that that is the truth. And then look for it to happen, and then experience it. Throughout the month, you'll be, you know, as you get the Science of Mind book, you'll be able to see how um, I've shared some of my experiences. In imagining things and then experiencing them. Not because it happened by chance or by some luck or because I um, burned some incense <laughs> and had a sacrificial lamb or something like that. Though I hear in some circles that works really well. But because there are specific steps that are taken and things that are felt and this, an acceptance of it as being true and real in order to experience it. So as we get started, I'd love to simply share with you today's reading. Is that okay with y'all? Oh, thank you for indulging me. Well, Joe Montana, I quote him, and then I quote from the Science of Mind. So this is what Joe Montana says. Now, Joe Montana, great football player, easy on the eyes, Right? For those of you who kind of like that personhood of Joe Montana, easy on the eyes and great football player in his time, right? He says, winners, I am convinced, imagine their dreams first. They want it with all their heart and expect it to come true. There is, I believe, no other way to live. This is what he believes, winners. I, and I don't think he ever picked up a science of mind book, but I don't know. But he's saying the same stuff we talk about day in and day out. He knows this truth. It's a universal truth. In the science of mind, it says, there is but one mind, and we are in it. We are in it as intelligence. So we're in it as intelligence. It accepts our thoughts and acts upon them. 
That's profound. There it is. Whatever it is that we can imagine, we think into it. It accepts our thoughts, that feeling tone, that vibration, and it acts upon it, meaning it makes it manifest. So here's what I write for the day. When I was growing up, and many of you know this already because I've shared it a couple of times, but here it is. When I was growing up, I watched the Hollywood Squares. It was a giant game of tic-tac-toe, and my favorite comedian, Paul Lynn, always occupied the center square. I liked his humor, and I enjoyed watching people win prizes and money. After a while, I began to imagine myself as a grown-up playing and winning on the Hollywood Squares. Visualize my surprise in 1998. I was a grown-up in 1998. <laughs> I was all grown up. Visualize my surprise in 1998 when my then favorite comedian, Whoopi Goldberg, sat in the center square on the new version of the Hollywood Squares. For an entire year, I imagined Tom Bergeron, the game show host, handing me an envelope with the prizes and cash that I won. In my dreams, I saw myself on the set calling upon Whoopi Goldberg, Caroline Ray, Gilbert Godfrey, or Bruce Valanche for the win. In my mind, I accepted the success and the prizes. I auditioned and made it on the show and became the first five-time champion on the show, winning over $40,000 in cash and prizes. Yes! Yes! What some may have called silly imagination or dreamer's vision became my reality because I accepted it took steps toward it. When it happens for one, it happens for all. I called on Whoopi Goldberg as many times as I could. <laughs> we were like right there. And it was amazing because it was almost surreal. I was very new to science of mind in 1999 when I went on the show. When I saw it in 1998, it was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And I would watch it faithfully every evening when it came on. I love Hollywood. I mean, I knew the theme song and everything. <laughs> and at the end of the show, you know, there would be this little envelope that said the Hollywood Squares and Tom Bergeron would always give the prize to the contestant who won. And I would always like, okay, can I tell y'all this? Y'all won't tell anybody, right? Okay. Shh. I would always like block out whoever's face that was and see myself there going. It was funny, it was the weirdest thing because it was like I would always, like I would reach out to the TV, like to grab the envelope. It was hilarious. But that's what it took. It was like, I'm accepting it. And it may seem silly to some, but I'm sure that Serena and Venus Williams saw themselves winning championships. I'm sure that all the great athletes saw themselves, Joe Montana, throwing the ball, catching the ball, having, you know, having somebody do a touchdown. I'm sure real estate agents see themselves shaking somebody's hand on closing a deal or folks coming together in that first kiss. I'm sure we've all imagined and have been in some situation where we've imagined something so strongly and so vividly that when it has come to pass, because we have accepted our good, that when it's happening, it almost seems surreal. It almost seems like I've been here before. And what it takes is it takes us leaving behind this old paradigm or mediocrity, or this idea that it is not possible, and really stepping into the realm of all things are possible. 
It takes us breaking away from these ideas that people tell us all the time that, oh, that's just a pipe dream. Oh, you not taking your medication, or what are you smoking crack, or what has happened to you? Have you lost your mind? That's not, you know, that's not for you. It's impossible. It takes breaking away from that kind of talk and those kinds of, of people that continue to talk that way and put us down for what it is that we imagine and where it is that we want to go and what it is that we want to see and experience. We have to break away from that in order to really step into that which is ours. The only reason that the thought had even entered our mind it was because it was a possibility. And if we grab hold of that possibility and really take it in and begin to accept that that success is for us and take the steps toward that instead of steps away from it, we can experience it. It is through our creation. It is through the 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 process of creation that happens, and why I say if it happens for one, it happens for all, because when it happens for me, it's really proof that it happens for you. There is no single good. There's only the collective good, because as one is lifted up, all are drawn to it. As the Christ is lifted up, all are drawn to go, hey, and what did the Christ say? He said, hey, greater work shall ye do. So as we come to go, whoa, what a miracle, or whoa, how did that happen, or whoa, how did you achieve that? How did you even conceive that that was even possible in the first place? We're lifted up. We're lifted up, not because we're having some fantasy dream, but indeed that we are tapping into that part of ourselves which is pure God, pure spirit, creativity, because creativity is imagination. And as we begin to simply grab hold of that imagination, of that which is being created in our imagination that is for our greater good, that is for the good of all, and we begin to accept our good, as Emma Curtis Hopkins says, there is good in the world and I ought to have it, as we begin to accept that that's how we create, as we begin to accept the words of Joe Montana, that first it is created in our imagination, in our dream, then we get to experience it. Here's a great example. A chair was first created here. And then we get to experience sitting above the floor instead of sitting on the floor. Because it was imagined to such great depth, the color, the fabric, the integrity of the structure was imagined with such detail. And then the steps were taken forward toward experiencing that. And now all of us get an opportunity to experience a chair. A chair is still a chair, uh, even when there's no one sitting there. Okay. Um, but something that's simple. So if we can do it with the easy things, then what Jan was reading about, imagine harmony, imagine peace, imagine love, imagine abundance, and then accepting it as that is my birthright, that is who and what I am. Later throughout the month, you'll be able to see and read some other experiences of how this is true. But you've all had that experience of thinking about somebody or even mentioning somebody's name, and next thing you know, they're calling you. Or you get an email from them. It's not a coincidence. Oh, gosh, I haven't talked to so-and-so in so long. That feeling attached with that thought creates. Or we're simply catching that which is already being broadcast, that which is already out there. 
that which is already ours, but we become so open and aware that it's kind of like we're catching the broadcast of, oh, I'm tuned in to so-and-so. There it is. And I'm so tuned in. So tuned in. It's important because as adults, just like one of the quotes that was read earlier. You know, we're, we're taught as children to pretend, to imagine, to see things. And then when we grow up, it's like, stop that baby stuff, that childhood stuff. That, like, it's, it's almost like our ability to imagine a life full of love, of joy, of peace, of wholeness. To imagine our life is indeed that life of God is somehow smashed when we allow ourselves to be led and brainwashed by the media, by society, by maybe even some of our own experiences. And yet, in our heart of hearts, when we sit in meditation or we sit in contemplation or when we sit at the beach or at a park, have you ever really noticed how your imagination is just going wild? Have you ever imagined, you know, even listening to the radio or quickly changing the channels, but, you know, it says, you know, the the mega million jackpot is this and this and this, and for a moment you go, gosh, what I could do with all that money. <laughs> and then you stop yourself and you go, oh, that'll never happen for me. <clears throat> Just squashed it. Just squashed it. But what if you were to nurture one or two of the things that really continue to come up for you, really continue to nag at you, to pull on your shirt or your skirt? What if we were to really focus and give attention to those things that we continue to imagine or those things that we continue to see or dream about over and over again? Those things that are not just something that continues to pass, but something that continues to just kind of nag at us or tug at our heartstrings. Maybe it's to buy an RV and let go of the worldly possessions and just travel in the U.S. Maybe it's to go on, a, on some kind of trip to help some children or to open up a school or to do a, a Habitat for Humanity. There's something that has been calling you. There's something in your imagination that continues to call to you. And you continue to just let it go by the wayside. But what if it continues to nag you because it's something that you are to do or be or someone that you're to talk with or communicate with or interact with? What if we were to really focus on the energetic of that imagination, of that creativity, and really give it some time and attention? Really focus upon it. Really accept it as our good. And begin to spend some time visualizing it. Seeing yourself there knocking a nail into a two by four that's gonna be the doorway of a new habitat for humanity. Or see yourself pulling your little luggage bag because you don't really need much because you're going someplace to help build a school or to go and provide some fresh water somewhere. What if it's that thing that continues to pull you to just go to the library and read to some kindergarten kids after school. There's something that is calling you that, is, that was stirred up within your imagination that you get to accept 
if you choose to. It does mean that you have to let go of all the reasons why you can't, why you don't have enough time, and you know, how you just got to break away from that stuff. You just got to leave it, let it be, and step into the possibilities, the infinite possibility. Because as long as we stay stuck in our paradigm of how things always turn out, if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to keep getting the same thing over and over again. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. But if you begin to even just allow yourself, just even have it be a little test, okay, all right, I'll play with my imagination a little bit, I'll let it go a little bit. Even if you begin to just give it some energy and really begin to put some thought into it and really begin to take it into your prayer work. For years, I ran from the idea and the vision and, the, and, and imagining myself being a minister. For years. Until finally I had to go, okay, this keeps... Nugging, nudging at me. It keeps nudging me. Do it, do it, do it. And it's like, no, no, nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody wants a minister like me. I, I don't want to have to wear a such and such. A, I mean, like, I kept coming up with all the reasons why, and yet in my heart of hearts, the, when I let my imagination flow, What I continue to see and what I saw were thousands of people before me. What I I get to experience is just that. The love of community, the love of us being together in community and us simply being reminded of our truth week in and week out. To see and watch the unfoldment and watch the growth of individuals and us as a, as a larger community, to see the awakening that happens is exactly what I had imagined years ago that I was running from. No, nah, that's not possible. Who am I? I can't do that. And yet when I started to accept it and go, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> but school's expensive. Or, you know, and, okay, well, maybe. just open the door to the, your imagination. Allow that creativity that is within you, which is really the way that God is showing up in, through, and as your life. Simply dropping those seeds of what is possible for you. It's not just going to happen for me and not happen for you. But just like it has happened for me in certain instances and continues to happen and continues to unfold... It is the same for each and every one of us as we accept it, as we say yes to it. And in saying yes to it, we're leaving behind and stepping into this new realm of possibility. We're traveling now. We're seeing things now. We're open to a new way of being. And when we allow ourselves, when we accept that this is our truth and that this is indeed possible then in the realm and in the energetic of all things possible, something collapses into our experience. And when we're in that experience, we get to go, wow, wow, this is really happening. This is really happening. The same is true the other way around, though. You know those times where everything is hitting the fan, and you kind of go, how did I get here? But you kind of saw it coming, and you had already imagined it that way, and sure enough, it's playing out just the way you saw it, and you go, wait a minute, like, who wrote this? Who wrote this comic book? I'm not digging it. I did. You're right. I wrote this. And look, it's unfolding exactly how, you know, because it doesn't matter. The, 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 the subjective mind of God, that, that intelligence, simply says yes to that which we place into it. So if we're placing into it doom and gloom and hatred and prejudice and, and stereotypes, and we're just putting into it all kinds of disaster, 
Of course. We're looking for it. Where's the disaster today? Uh, when's the other shoe going to fall off? When's the, you know, and, and sure enough, oh, there it is. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Syria, oh, okay. I knew, da, 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 woo, 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 da, 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 da. So now, as a spiritual community, what we get to do, what we get to do is imagine peace. Spend time imagining harmony, seeing ourselves as global citizens, seeing ourselves loving one another, seeing ourselves exchanging, seeing ourselves embracing and loving, seeing ourselves in community, valuing the differences instead of killing each other off or hating each other for the differences. But going, wow, is that how you do that? This is how we do this. That's really interesting. Wow, that's something I can respect about how your culture, how your tradition, how your people do such and such and such. We have to, and we get to, if we choose to, dun, 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 dun. you know, our mission <laughs> is to begin to imagine and put our energies into a world that works for everyone, into that which we want to have as our experience. When we think about it from the end of what it is we'd like to experience and then work our way back, what are the steps? If this is what I want to experience, what must I be doing? And before doing, what must I be accepting? And before accepting, what must I be thinking? <laughs> in order for this to be made manifest. See, when I was a kid, I had no clue that I would be on the Hollywood squares. I had no clue that I would be hanging out with Whoopi Goldberg. I had no clue that I was going to be writing in the science of mind. I had no clue that this weekend, Friday night, me and Sunny Day would be hanging out with Whoopi Goldberg in Las Vegas. With Nichelle Nichols, she was the first black woman on Star Trek. And she was out at the show. But I had no clue when I was a kid, just watching and imagining and letting my imagination go. And then imagining being a grown up and getting that envelope. I had no clue that just that imagination, just accepting that, just seeing it, feeling it, and then taking the steps forward to it would provide me the rich and wonderful life that I have so far. So far. Who knew? And that's the great thing about imagination that we may think that it's just this, and yet it's so much more. Because this is what precedes all of this. It's no accident that we have these ideas, these thoughts, this wonderful imagination. It is the way that God expresses itself in, through, and as us. And if we allow ourselves to have that snuffed out, then what we're doing is really denying our Godhood, our God self. What we get to do now is correct that. And what we get to do now as adults is stand in our imagination, in our creativity, what we get to do now is kind of go, hey, I don't care what's happened in the past. I'm going to break away from that, and I'm going to step into, wow, this energetic of all things possible. Because indeed, all things are possible when we allow ourselves to imagine and accept. Then we get to experience it as our very life. So let's take that into our meditation today. Let's take a look at 
simply moving, moving aside those things that have blocked us from really stepping into our imagination. If we can just begin to see whatever that is and just picking it up and moving it aside, and just clearing it out of the way and stepping into all things are possible. So as you clear your laps and you prepare your Self for meditation. The invitation now is to simply take in a deep breath. And in that breath, we're simply knowing that there's a power and a presence and a life that is living in, through, and as us right now. And that as we are having our life in this life that is God, it simply says yes to that which we place into it. So as we begin to allow our imagination to flow, we allow ourselves to remember that right where I am, God is. As we remember that I am that which thou art, and thou art that which I am, that it is one and the same, that God is living, breathing, and having its way as us, that that power that is that power of God, that is that power of life, is the same power that we have simply for our own use and for the use of the greater good. And so right now, we imagine peace in our home. Right now, if there's any discord, if there's any unsettled business, we see this peace that passes all human understanding and we begin to see peaceful relationships in our own home. We begin to see the love emerge. We begin to see peace in our own mind, peace in our heart, peace in our body. Knowing that everything is working together for our good and for the good of all. And as we now imagine peace in our body and peace in our home, we begin to see peace in our neighborhood. And as we see peace in our neighborhood and as we begin to feel what it's like to have peaceful neighbors, loving and kind neighbors, we take that a step further and we begin to see a a peaceful state and a peaceful country and a peaceful world where love is the order of the day. We imagine harmony and abundance. We imagine and begin to see that There's a possibility that it can absolutely be true when we begin to see it and be steeped in it and accept it, not doubt it, but accept a world that works for everyone. We begin to accept that there is no personal good, meaning that when it happens for me, it happens for all that that possibility is there, that it can collapse out of endless possibilities. It can collapse into the experience of peace and abundance and harmony and love and joy and health and wholeness for all. And then there's something that is calling you. And that's something that is calling you Imagine yourself fully there, fully in it, 
fully being. And take a few moments there to see yourself experiencing it as if, as if it is happening right now in your life. Whatever that is, take a few minutes to just be with it as if it is happening right now. It is happening right now.
God is calling me and I'm grateful like I've never been before. And as we say yes, as we say yes to that which is calling us forth, and we accept it as our truth. We begin to simply take those steps toward it. And it becomes our experience. So don't be scared. Simply break away from that mediocrity, that which is no longer needed. Allow yourself to fly. Allow yourself to reach the heights that are yours to be reached. For you are being called in your own way to live your greater truth. And so as a community, we say yes to it, and together we say, and so it is. Amen. Hi, welcome back. I'd like to invite our ushers forward. And as we stay conscious and grateful, what we get to do now is simply participate in a redistribution process where we have been given so much and we have an opportunity to now give a fourth. So at this time, the invitation is to simply take your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, that which you have brought forth to share, whether it's an auto tithe or whether it's something that has been mailed in from our live streamers or even yourselves here. Just simply pour a blessing into it blessing first of gratitude, being grateful that you have been given so much and that now from this plentitude and from this bounty, you get to give. And so we bless these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, knowing that they are indeed multiplied, that they are indeed used so that not only this community, but that we may as a global community, awaken to this consciousness and to this truth that there is a power and a presence and that we have our being and livingness in it and it has its being in us. And so it is, amen. Let's just go forth. Hey, you ready, sunny day? going to bless us with some music, and we're just going to love her up while she does that.
I grew up in Shad Town, and when the rain would fall down, I just stare out my window, dreaming of what could be, and if I'd end up happy, I would pray. Trying hard to reach out, but when I tried to speak out, felt like no one could hear me. I wanted to belong here, but something felt so wrong here, so I'd pray, I could break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do what it takes till I touch the sky. I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change and break away. Darkness and into the sun, but I won't forget all the ones that I love. I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change, and break away. I want to feel the warm breeze and sleep under a palm tree and feel the rush of the ocean. Get on board a fast plane or travel on a jet plane far away and break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do the sky. I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change, and break away. Out of the darkness and into the sun, but I won't forget the place I've come from. I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change, and break away. Buildings with a hundred Swinging round revolving doors Maybe I don't know where they'll take me But I, I gotta keep moving on Moving on And fly away Break away I'll spread my wings And I'll learn how to fly Though it's not easy To tell you goodbye I'll take a risk Take a chance Make a change And break But I won't forget the place I come from. I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change, and break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. I'll let it all go. All the old Jim Bianchi, sunny day. Great job. Okay, who's brave enough to tell us and share with us something that they've imagined doing that they're now going to really step into? Yeah, back there and right here? Yeah? What, what do you imagine doing or being? You gonna say something? 
or you're doing it. Imagine jumping and she's experiencing it right now. I love it. High five, mama. All right. We have one back here. We're reminded of the joy of living, huh? It's nothing quite as specific. Hello. And thank you again. And thank you. That breakaway was so fitting and relevant. It's just, it's amazing. I don't know if you guys get inside of my mind or if y'all can relate to this, but it just seems like the, the message each week is so relevant and timely for whatever I'm going through. And this whole thing about what we're imagining, and that's the thing I love about this work, yet it's so important to have a community like this and to consistently participate and play in this because our subconscious minds and our programs and the world and the news and all of that, we can get stuck sometimes. And I've been in a funk for a few months with environments and people. I've done a lot of clutter clearing. And to have this opportunity to focus and recalibrate, if we will, and remember what we're capable of. And I know that we're all here for a purpose and we came into this life for a reason. And to have a moment, a sacred moment like we've had this last hour and to be able to go into meditation and visualization and to imagine consciously what we want to create is so important to do. Not just now in this moment, yet every single day, every morning when we wake up before we start our day and to think about our life because I know we're here for greatness, each one of us. And it's important to make sure that we check in with that and we consciously create it rather than subconsciously by default allow it to happen to us based upon the people in our life, the circumstances, the culture, whatever it might be. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Breakaway because that's exactly a process I'm going through right now. And it's, uh, it's a purge and it's also liberating and I can feel it. And I'm just excited to be here and I thank each one of you too. So mm -hmm. let's keep it up and let's keep coming and let's keep growing this community and this, because there's a vibration. Like I feel you, I feel you, I feel everybody here. And when we have the opportunity to surround ourselves with like-minded people, it, it raises our vibration. And we can all do this together. So I'm just really excited about it. Thank you. And I've got a lot to do. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for bringing the message. I love it. It is a revealing experience. We bring the message. Hi. Hi. <sighs> it's a nice evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a teacher. And I've taught in many forms in many ways. And... Um, Recently, it was a kind of a visioning thing for me. This summer, I just said, I'm ready to reach out and do something more, and I just want something to fall into my lap. Bam. Got an email that night, a networking um, music teacher job came in, actually, for me. So I just started this week, and I, I teach a lot of different things. I love teaching music. It's kindergarten through third grade kids right now. And really what it is for me is love. So I can sing love, dance love, <laughs> academics love, whatever it is, it's really about love. So my first day on the job, 100 kids, you know, 30 at a time, 20, 30, 20, in a door, out the door. And I just said, whatever goes on today, I want it to be about love. So I get to the school and I set up my things. I'm busy, busy, busy and thinking of what I'm doing. And a little girl gets up, a little second grader gets up out of her chair and just starts walking toward me. And I'm in the middle of teaching, just beginning, and I said, sweetie, are you okay? And she just reached out and hugged me. She said nothing, finished hugging, and went back and sat down. And I just thought, gosh, you know, I, I created love in the room. And she knew that, and she picked that up. And so now she gave the other kids permission to feel that. <laughs> so it's been real fun. I love it. Thank you for sharing that with us. How wonderful. All right. Haven't heard from you in a while, so I'm happy to hear from thank you. Thank you. Well, for those that don't know me, my name is Soraya, and before I start, I just want to thank my beautiful Sonny, Jim, the whole staff, and of course, Reverend Sunshine, because she does bring sunshine in my life, <laughs> and not only in mine, but in everybody around me. But um, talking about imagination, risk, chance, I mean, you name it, is really in interesting because Three years ago, I actually certified with the Chopper Center. I became an instructor. And of course, with all the butterflies, I had no idea what this was going to take me. But I knew that some purpose was there. And talking about nagging and really uh, something just kept just pushing. So I did. And of course, I've been grateful for the last three years to not only meet beautiful people here, because of that, I came here from the Chopper Center, 
I met a lady that was coming here, and that's how I came here. But anyway, I kept um, just seeing in my vision that my intention, my purpose of coming to this was to touch, li to touch people's life in a very powerful way or whatever way, just to give them out whatever the Lord brought me through me. And, and that's always something very scary in a way because it's like, whoa, that's kind of big. <laughs> but uh, last year I kept having in my meditations retreat, retreat, retreat. And I kept thinking, retreat? How? Where? I, I don't know. And sure enough, last year I did two retreats in Ramona in the prop, excuse me, property that um, my boyfriend and I have in, in this beautiful place. Of course, my beautiful Francis and so many other people came to the first one in June and then to the second one in September. Then the lady that came to the two retreats said to me, why don't we do one in Italy next year, meaning this year? And I go, sure, let's do it. Sure enough, we are going next week, the 12th, the three of us in Lord's hands doing this. I have no clue, but one thing I can say, it really is the divine that you just keep continually trust. And you talk about trusting here. We're going to a different country, different language with just the divine energy of going to do the work that he wants us to do. So it is powerful when yes. you talk about just listening and being guided through whatever it is that comes through you and don't think how we're just listen, trust, and do it. And it truly is amazing. It's magical. And I can't wait to see what unfolds because I had no clue. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we can't wait to hear all about it. Thank you, Soraya. Hey, little Melody. Wow. So I want to thank Cameron, who's been holding the light in the back. He's one of uh, our practitioners. And also Jan for doing that great reading and just that wonderful prayer that just really helped to set the tone. Our practitioners are going to be available after service today uh, to pray with you. So if there's something on your heart, something in your mind, something you just kind of need to See rightly, see our practitioners. They're going to be in the chapel after service, and it is their gift to you to be able to pray with you and to see rightly with you. Also, want to thank Jim Bianchi and Sunny Day, our music team. I love working with these two, they're just so in tune and just know exactly how to let it flow. You know, music is a ministry, so thank you so much. I see Jenny back in the room. She's our coordinator. She makes sure that everything runs smoothly. So thank you so much. <laughs> Melanie in our sound booth tonight. Thank you. We have Tim and Annette who have been working the camera and who uh, make it possible that folks at home um, or folks that are at work, at home, in the office, maybe even shut in, can see us on the internet. So thank you so much for the work that you bring and how you get to bring so many people right here into our space by uh, videotaping and providing our services online. Thank you so much. And mostly thank you. Thank you for being here this evening and thank you for the love that you bring and the consciousness that you bring and the willingness to just make a difference, not only in your lives, but a difference in the world. Want to let you know that um, this month is, you know, back to school for a lot of kids. But it's also back to school and back to classes here at Seaside. So I know that uh, if they're not already in your programs tonight, that there's going to be an educational um, list of classes that are happening. I want to let you know that Sunny and I are going to be doing a class uh, starting at the end of the month. It's called Soul Recovery. And it is um, based in 12-step work, but you don't have to be in 12-step at all. But it is indeed using the 12 steps, but also 12 spiritual keys to really uncover some of the stuff that's been holding you back and helping you to let it go, release it, and move forward from that place of knowing exactly who we are and then living from that space. That class is going to start on the 26th. It's going to go the 26th of September, the 3rd of October. And because we want it to integrate, you'll be off on the 10th. And then um, the next two um, 
Thursday mornings. So it's on Thursday mornings from 9.30 to 11.30. And just know, if you have a 9 to 5 and you really want to participate, just imagine yourself being here. <laughs> and then just simply inform your boss that you'll be coming in late that day, but that it all is going to be well. And just see yourself here. See yourself thriving. Um, there's additional classes, accredited classes, that are going to be happening as well. So please take a look at it so that you can take what's appropriate for you and uh, continue to move forward as we unfold. So we have uh, exceeded our time here. No, we haven't. We have forever. We're in the forever. You want the muffin? I want the muffin. Okay. Let us rise and pray out together. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voices, in love we stand. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voices in love we in the family room for a big old hug. Don't forget to pick up your Science of Mind magazine for this month. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. So let there be peace. I am a stand for peace, let there be joy. I am a stand for joy, let there be love. I am a stand for love. We are making a new world now. I see the world, imagine the world. 